Hello and welcome to the Front Scratch Body. I'm Liv and this is a very exciting day indeed. I have bought my first big boy food processor. I got myself a Magimix 4200XL. 4200XL? I was going between the 3200 and the 4200. Uh, there was about a 40 pound difference and in the end I went for this one. I have not tried it at all. It literally arrived today in this, in this box and uh, I'm going to give it a go in front of you guys. So it comes with this box of accessories which is pretty big as you can see. Uh, this thing, I feel like I look really tiny as I'm stood here but I'm not actually a very small person so it's a big thing. The base is pretty heavy um, and yeah as you can see the accessories take up quite a lot of space. I don't think you're going to be sad to have any of this, so it's totally worth it. There's a big blade, uh, this, this whisk, um, there's a spatula, all these different um, grating and slicing devices. So I don't think you're going to think that any of it is not necessary to have, but it does take up a bit of space, so it's just something to be aware of. It comes with this, um, it's called the blender mix, that you can add into the big bowl uh, when you're mixing stuff. It just helps scrape sort of the outsides, I think. That's quite a good idea. Uh, but that kind of lives on its own, which is slightly annoying, but uh, hey ho. So I'm gonna just try all of these things on the road. We're gonna start with a small bowl and work our way up. So I'll tell you the reason why I decided to go for the slightly bigger 4200 rather than the 3200. Um, and that is that the biggest bowl is is you know bigger and I think it's three liters volume whereas the small bowl is still the same size because quite often I will make something in fairly small uh, quantities so I didn't want to have one that's massive in every single way. Sometimes I make just a little bit of something you know pesto or nut butters or things like that so I really wanted to keep the smallest bowl in my food processor small. This is 1.2 liters, it's fairly small like this so that comes with its own blade uh, that only fits in the small one and I'm gonna give that a go now I'm gonna first try and just do some I've got some leftover stale bread crusts that I'm going to just try and make into breadcrumbs so all the bowls kind of fit into each other as you use them you've got this large feed shoot here and I'm just going to take the stale bread the Magic Mix only has three buttons. It's auto and pulse and then stop, obviously. Um, I don't mind that. I'm not really that interested in loads of different speed settings and stuff like that. You might be, but for me, um, you know, if I'm starting, I'm starting it. And to me, it's more important that you watch the time it takes to make the thing that you need to make. And you kind of, you want it to be powerful every time. And also Magic Mix do claim that you know, it automatically evaluates what's in <laughs> in the bowl and will automatically then fit the speed to what you're making. So I don't know how that works, but you know, that's cool. Let's try it. Yeah, I definitely want to have this in. So yeah, when I didn't have this extra pusher in, um, it did kind of jump out into the medium bowl. Uh, maybe that's just me being stupid, but since you don't have to have that in, that was a bit surprising. Um, it's not making it, polarizing it entirely. Uh, it's making some nice large crumbs, um, which is fine, um, but you know, I was maybe expecting a slightly smaller, maybe, you know, really pulverizing is more for the big bowl. So I might try that uh, at some other point. So breadcrumbs in that small one, maybe not ideal. So I'm quite curious now to see how it deals with nuts, because as I said, I often make nut butters. I don't want to have a huge amount of it lying around. So I kind of just want to have like a jar's worth. So... 
I'm curious to see if the small bowl is going to actually make it into nut butter or if that's something I'm going to have to maybe do in the, in the large bowl. Um, let's try. This is roasted peanuts. Let's see. Okay, so they're kind of pulverized pretty quickly, so that is good, that's promising, but uh, yeah, still some fairly big chunks in there. There is definitely some spill down into the medium bowl, so yeah. Try pulsing just for fun. I can feel that is a pretty powerful motor, which is cool. It's yeah, I mean it's it's starting to maybe go buttery. So when I make nut butters, I don't want to add any oil, anything. I just want it to run for long enough to create butter on its own, because then it's you know the healthiest, the purest. So uh, it does take a little while sometimes with food processes, but I'm hoping that this is not going to take too long. So let's just uh, keep trying. Obviously, I am prepared to have to go in there and scrape off the sides a bit. I'm just wanting to not have to go in and do that all the time. And that's why I was talking about this small bowl. So it is starting to get thicker now. Um, so it's looking pretty promising. So let's use the spatula that comes with the food processor. Just kind of get all the stuff in from the sides here. Smells nice. <laughs> okay, it's turning into butter. That's good. It is taking a little while. At the beginning of, of doing the nuts, a tiny bit of it did get into this bowl, which is obviously fine, it's not a huge problem, but it means that like every time you use the small bowl, you're having to clean both of them. We have peanut butter. Mmm. Wow, well, I should have thought of that. It's not easy to talk with about peanut butter in your mouth. It does take a while, definitely, but uh, that's fairly normal. Small bowl, tested. Let's try the medium one after we've cleaned it again. All right, so we're gonna try the medium bowl. I think this is when we get to have fun with some of the uh, accessories and stuff. So let's just try and chop some stuff up. Right, so I'm gonna try these different discs that come with, there were four that come with the the magic mix and you have to just put in this bit to secure it and then this long black bit faces down I think. There we go. So it says that you can use the discs with the big and the medium bowl. Very exciting. Woo! I mean, that was obviously super quick. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah, so you can keep your fingers safe. Do not get the fingers in there, obviously. Um, you have to use this to push anything down because the blades are right there. So not right there. You really have to reach to get your fingers in. But I just wanted to say that because as you can see, <laughs> it chops very fast. And the same thing with these blades, like they are sharp. So even when they're not running, just be a bit careful. So that was this one, ES4. Quite a wide space here. My eyes are watering now <laughs> over this leak. I'm gonna try the slightly thinner one for a cucumber. This is the ES2, um, but let's see how it um, slices some cucumber in there. My cucumber is too thick for this, so I'm going for the wide shoot. Let's see how that goes. Beautiful. I'm such a slow chopper 
um, when it comes to slicing things really thin. I'm not one of those cool chefs who just go T -t 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 -t. So now I can make it look like I am which is amazing. So really happy with those two I'm gonna try and grate some things now with the small grater RG2 I'm gonna just do a small carrot and see how that goes love. <laughs> oh yeah, got a little bit left there, but oh, brilliant. Let's finally grated super quick. I have to stop eating everything. Very happy with that. So this is the uh, final blade. I forgot to check what the name was, but um, it's the bigger grater. And uh, I'm gonna try and grate some cheese. And if you hate grating cheese as much as me, you'll understand how excited I am to see how this goes. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's beautiful. You're getting like a little bit of a leftover thing. You know I'm gonna eat it. Now on the topic of grated cheese, if I can just give you a, the From Scratch Body tip, try not to buy grated cheese from the shops. Um, I know it's a headache to have to do it yourself, especially if you don't have a fancy food processor, which for all my life up until today, I have not, and it's a really boring job, but it does contain a lot of preservatives. Anything that's freshly sliced in the shops, you know, or grated for you, they have to put in preservatives to keep it looking uh, and tasting fresh. So do try and avoid that. But anyway, if you are thinking of getting a food processor with this kind of work, I definitely recommend that because it's just so quick. There were seconds very very happy so finally we're going to try the big boy the biggest bowl uh the reason that i went for this 4200 rather than the 3200 just to get a bit more space the only thing i'm not going to test for you today is making dough it has this dough hook which is not really a blade like this is a really sharp blade whereas this one is just plastic i mean it's still fairly sharp but that is specifically to knead bread and never in my life have i put dough in a food processor. I've always done it by hand and I quite love that but it's going to be quite handy because I make quite a lot of bread now and stuff for the blog so I am very excited to try that. However, I will very soon be doing a video on my best tips for making good bread so you will probably see me using it then. That's why I needed this big bowl because if you're making any kind of size bread you do need some space if you are making it in a food processor. So that'll be exciting to try later. Before today, I'm gonna try this proper big blade and I'm gonna do one thing that I do a lot and I've tried to do in my tiny little, you know, cheap food processor and that is cauliflower. So I'm gonna be putting this blender mix in to see if it kind of takes care of the stuff on the sides. This is something I do a lot, uh, just raw cauliflower mixing it before I make it into a soup or I make cauliflower tacos or cauliflower bolognese. If you want any of those recipes, you can check them out on my website or on my podcast, The From Scratch Body. Um, the website is thefromscratchbody.com and cauliflower is obviously raw. It's, it's quite hard and tough. So it's something that you need a, a steady, strong motor for. Oh my God. That's insane, that's incredible. That's brilliant, that is like almost too much already. That is like cauliflower rice basically, which is a wonderful thing too. Um, so yeah, that is actually those few seconds that I did there, that's almost too much for some of my recipes. So that's brilliant. Um, yeah, it does seem like having this on the sides kind of keeps pushing it in, um, which is really, really nice. Uh, maybe I should try without. Okay, so let's say I just want to chuck in a few more bits then without the blender mix in. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that gets stuck in the corners a tiny, tiny bit more, but it still just does it really, really quickly. I've got cauliflower rice here, so I'm gonna have to make something with that now. <laughs> um, oh, it smells amazing. That's really, that's really good to see. So that makes me more confident about being able to make something really pulverized. Like I was talking about the breadcrumbs earlier. When I did those in the small bowl, they were kind of struggling a tiny bit. I made breadcrumbs, but they were quite big, which is nice sometimes. So that might be what I want to do with the cauliflower if I'm doing bigger chunks. So it's just good to be aware of which bits do which jobs. And this blade is obviously so sharp and so big, so it gets everything really, really quickly. So anything for really, really pulverized small things, if you want to make, I, I can imagine, you know, oat flour, for instance, if you put rolled oats in there, almond flour, probably better for, for nut butters as well. The only problem is obviously the amount, but maybe with the blender mix that can keep it moving, even if it's not a massive quantity. So really positive to see how quickly it deals with something like raw cauliflower. So I'm gonna be doing one last test uh, of this today, and that is the whisk that comes with it uh, in the big bowl. I'm gonna whisk some egg whites. And the book that comes with it, it's part manual and part recipe and tips uh, book. Really, really good uh, from a first glance at it. Quite nice um, original recipe. So I'm gonna try some of these. And it says here that um, for egg whites and anything that you want some air into, you don't need the smaller shoot into the big feed shoot. So you just need this one. All right, please don't blow into my face. Ah, nice and smooth. So we're about um, a minute in now. I think maybe uh, for, it looks really, really nice. It looks like it's just blending lovely. I think maybe for smaller quantities uh, like this, this is three egg whites. Uh, you might wanna put the blender mix in again to just keep pushing it back in because uh, this is nice, but it's just kind of ending up on the sides a bit. It's just because it's a small quantity. It's looking really lovely and airy. It feels so nice and smooth when it goes around. By the way, the whole machine is really quiet. Um, it's not got this really annoying, intense, you know, blender sound where you think that your neighbors are gonna hate you. Yeah, that's fairly quick and really nice and smooth. So that's my first ever try of my new Magimix 4200. I love it so much. Um, I love every component of it. And I think I have an idea of which bits I'm probably gonna be using the most. As I said, it comes with this little book and it has not only some recipes and stuff that is great to use the food processor for, but it also has really detailed um, descriptions of every component. It also tells you what other accessories uh, you can get for it. And I'm really wanting to get the citrus press. I wish it came with the citrus press because if it did, then I feel like I would have everything I'd ever need in one go, apart from maybe a scale as well, but it can only be so many things in one. Really, really great. Um, as it should be for that price. It's not super cheap, paid 300 pounds for this. They do have some cheaper options as well and some more expensive, some bigger ones as well. There's a 5200, I think as well. So quite a few options. I'm very happy with this. I'm definitely going to be using it loads on my channel. So if you wanna see me do more stuff with it, look out for my bread video with tips on how to make amazing bread every time. The Magic Mix also comes with a 30 year guarantee for the motor, not for the whole thing. You know, obviously tells you that this is gonna be something that hopefully stays with you for a long time. So um, I love the steady, heavy base. It feels super safe. It feels really safe to use it in general because it's so rigid about, you know, you have to click everything in place, otherwise it just won't start. I'm just very, very happy with my purchase and I'm, Super excited to be using it loads in the future. If you have a Magic Mix and you have any tips on how to use it in the best way, do let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything I missed that you'd want to see me try, 
do let me know as well and maybe I can do one when I've had some more experience with it. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.